I'm Eileen Anderson, and I'm responding to the World Dog Training Motivation Transparency Challenge. The challenge comes from a suggestion by Jean Donaldson that consumers should ask prospective dog trainers three questions. Those questions are, what will happen when my dog gets it right? What will happen when my dog gets it wrong? And is there a less invasive method to do this? And the people should keep asking those questions until they get clear and concrete answers. I'm not a professional dog trainer, but I think it would be great if everybody were asking these questions and anyone who's trying to be a better trainer would do well to ask them. So first, what happens when my dog gets it right? She's going to get something she loves. I train a bunch with food, all sorts of levels of food. I know what my dogs like and I know what's going to reinforce their behavior most likely. I've also got three dogs that love to tug. Uh, one that plays ball, two that use the flirt pole, a couple that like to play in water. There's a smorgasbord of positive reinforcement possibilities out there, and I try to use them all. And again, it's my job to know what's going to work for a particular dog. So part of my job is to be a good observer. Okay, what's going to happen when she gets it wrong? Well, not much is going to happen to her, but a bunch of stuff is going to happen to me. But there's two specific answers to that. One is that if we're just going along and it's a momentary aberration, she has been responding well over 80% correct and she just misses it one time, she's not going to get the reinforcer. And my dogs know exactly what that means. That means that was not the desired behavior. We'll go on, hopefully she will get back on track and get access to the goodies that I have. I have to say that's kind of an unlikely scenario. I'm an amateur, and more likely, if she does not do the correct behavior, it's because I screwed up. I might have raised criteria too fast. I might have forgotten about how dogs generalize and discriminate. I just could have done something too fast, too soon, the wrong way, and I do that frequently. In that case, I'm going to probably try to regroup. And the way I'll do that is that when she misses it, and if it's looking like I just missed the boat entirely, I will cue another behavior, something easy that she can do, positively reinforce it, and then stop the session and regroup. Now there's a couple other reasons she might have missed the behavior. Could be that she doesn't feel well, she's tired, what I'm asking of her might hurt. Also, she could be too upset, she could be afraid and unable to respond. And again, in that case, if I think that's happening, I need to stop. I need to not be worrying about trying to get behavior, and I need to be addressing her emotional state. So the thing is, as an amateur, it's kind of hard for me to make these decisions on the fly. I might not notice that her respiration is up, or that she keeps looking at something over there um, that's bothering her. And so if this kind of thing keeps happening, if we're making mistakes on this regularly, there is a third consequence, and the third consequence is that I contact a better trainer than I am. I call in a professional. I may contact my wonderful friend and local trainer. I may consult one of my colleagues on the internet. Um, I have options. If it's a very serious problem and this has not happened, but I would not hesitate to ask my vet to put me in contact with a veterinary behaviorist and go that route. We haven't had to do that, but my point is here that I would call in the reinforcements for me. What I would not do is punish my dog. Now that being said, I'm a crossover trainer. I have some battle habits. If I'm frustrated, I might use force by accident or inadvertently sometime. I might push my dog's butt down. I might even do a collar pop. I'm not saying that to condone it. I'm saying that because the word of the day is transparency. And we're talking about what we do, what we intend to do, what we might do. And in that case, of course, that's another really good reason for me to call, be calling in some help. I don't want to be doing that to my dogs. The third and final question is, is there a less invasive method? Sure, get a better trainer. I'm not kidding. I'm an amateur. 
my skill set is smaller than someone who does this professionally and sees different dogs all the time. And so such a person would give my dogs a less bumpy ride than I do. However, they are stuck with me. And that's why I'm trying to be a better trainer. And that's also why I don't hesitate to call in help when I need it. Those are my answers. I pass on the challenge to Randy Rossman and all pet dog owners who are trying to be better trainers. Thanks a lot.